Hi, this is uh, the role of a prophet part two. Okay, now uh, as you know, um, I'm reading off my computer off an article. Okay, the second part is the functions of a prophet. Um, in Jeremiah 1.10 we hear uh, a scripture um, and we're going to take that out. In, in uh, the verse of Jeremiah 10, the different facets of a prophet's ministry can be summed up in this sixfold description. I've given a brief description of what I believe to be in a general application of each of these facets. Right here, number one, to pluck up weeds, both in the lives of individuals as, uh, as well as weeds growing in the church, which is false teaching and brethren. Okay. To pluck up. Okay. If someone's got a major pornography addiction, a major adultery addiction, pornography and adultery, he's playing around on his wife and he's uh, watching pornography. A prophet can approach that person and says, these are your two sins, you need to stop. I'm going to tell the whole church about them unless you repent. Next time I see you, I want to see that you're not guilty of those sins or we're going to bring you before the church. The prophet can do that. His job is to do that. His job is to uh, also... Uh, He's also to find someone who's false in the church, a, a goat, like a goat or, or a wolf in the church, someone who's working against the things of God, who's got demonic spirits and stuff, and he's to pluck them out, to identify them, to expose them and get rid of them. He's also to pluck up the weeds of false teaching. A prophet's job is to go into a church hear what's being taught, get a spiritual reading of God the Father, of what's the wrong teaching in that church, and then he preaches in that church the truth and exposes the false teaching and has the people in the church reject it. Now, a person can come to the church, be called to preach, and get told to preach against the prosperity doctrine, for instance, and the minister in the church may rise up and say, you can never come back again and not repent of that. Or he can preach in the church and the church come to repentance and then stop that practice of prosperity teaching. Either way, the prophet has done his job. Now, if a prophet did his job and said the prosperity teaching is wrong and the minister rose up and some of the church rose up, that doesn't mean the job is wasted because some of the people who heard that message will just simply leave the church. If they were convicted, they'll leave the church. They'll see that the church won't repent, is continuing to do it, so they'll leave and find a church that isn't. Okay. Um, okay, the second function is to break down. Uh, to break down resistances, resistances and rebellions to God's word will and way by believers okay resistances to resistance and rebellion to God's word will and way by believers okay so his job is to break down any opposition in believers and in the church to doing God's will and following God's word now I'll, I'll give you an example right the, the Christian church, by and large, in many denominations and many churches, teach we're saved by grace, not by works, lest no, sh no man shall boast. This is a false teaching. It's true that we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, but if you've got no works, you're not a Christian. Uh, so, the Christian church will teach that we're not judged by the law, the Old Testament law. The Old Testament law of been passed away so we're not uh, being judged by the law anymore and we don't have to obey God in the Old Testament law and then they're taught that if you try and obey what Jesus commanded you're trying to earn your salvation and that's a works doctrine so essentially they're saying you just don't have to obey God all you've got to do is say a sinner's prayer and be saved by grace and whenever you don't obey and you slip up and sin you're forgiven if you ask for forgiveness. This is error. It's heresy. God 
commands us to be spotless and pure. James commands us to be spotless, unspotted by the world, not affected by the world and the lusts of the world. Most Christians I know are caught up with the things of the world and love the things of the world. Okay, It's got to be that you're sold out for Jesus and Jesus alone. And you're sold out for the commands of Jesus and the things Jesus taught. And you don't make a practice of doing things the opposite of what Jesus taught. A prophet is to break down the resistances and rebellion against God's word and his way. If God's calling a church to reach out to the community and do major evangelism, and he's been calling people in the church to do so, when a prophet walks into the church and finds out what God's been calling them to do because God tells them, he'll get up the, on the microphone and blast them and saying for years God's been telling you to reach out to this community he's going to crush this church if you don't start doing it all your members are going to leave you not need to obey the Lord and then he'll preach a sermon on what true Christianity is and how to reach out to people and give a practical demonstration how that church can do that he, he won't just bring a hard word he'll bring a motivational word to encourage them to reach out. And whatever God's will is for that church, if that church is to become a music-based church to produce music and reach the nations, and I've got talented musicians and singers there, but they just haven't organized and started to do that. They've been told that, but people have had excuses and I haven't got the time, I haven't got the money, we haven't got the resources. There's all sorts of excuses come up and resistances and rebellions come up against the will of God. A prophet will go in and say, you've been called to produce money, you need to book a studio and start recording. That's the prophet's job. Prophet is a spokesman for God. If people aren't doing what God tells them to do, he goes in and tells them, didn't God tell you this? Why aren't you doing it? You can see that a prophet's job isn't a glamorous job. Everyone seems to want to be a prophet. It's not a glamorous job. It's a lot of rejection. Not every time he preaches will it be received well. When you come against rebellions and resistances, people hate change. And so when you come and start talking change, sometimes you'll get rejected and told to go and never to come back again. So a prophet's job may not be easy, but it's essential. Okay, we'll carry on in part three.